Hey folks, before I get into this video, I want to remind you to enter our giveaways. We have two of them going on, one of them for an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, or a Nintendo Switch. The other for two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. You can like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, whatever. Be sure to go down and hit the links in the description as well to enter. Uh, you guys are awesome, and uh, I can't wait uh, to give that stuff away. Let's move on to the video. Alright, so Nintendo fans we are used to seeing quite a few things on the internet even in real life the switch is more popular than ever right it, it's clearly the number one platform right now i know playstation 4 has more units sold but in terms of relevancy in the moment it's basically switch and then waiting for playstation 5 and xbox series x so right now nintendo is kind of in its own market and what's been happening is that People are being kind of critical towards Nintendo. Now, there's reasons to be, Joy-Con issues, stuff like that. We could talk about how the Switch isn't as powerful as the other platforms, but it's also portable, so it kind of gets away with it. But here's the thing. Nintendo fans, as a Nintendo fan myself, sometimes I kind of feel attacked. And because that's because there's a lot of uh, people, as we're getting into these next-gen platforms, that are reminding us that all Nintendo does is rehash the same IPs for 30 years. Nintendo is not unique. Nintendo doesn't do anything amazing with their games. They don't come up with new ideas anymore. Nintendo is just solely reliant on the Marios, the Zeldas, the Metroids of the world. Now, it's undeniable that Nintendo does rely heavily on their IPs, especially Mario and Zelda. Those have been the temple, uh, you know, twin tower-esque uh, IPs that Nintendo leans upon. But to argue that Nintendo just rehashes these IPs over and over again is, is a bit baffling and almost insulting. I mean, does Splatoon not exist or Splatoon 2? What about ARMS this generation? Is, is that not a game? Now, we could talk about design language, uh, design styles and types, how Nintendo uh, does kind of stick to similar design languages. As an example, uh, if you play a Mario game, are you that surprised to see that same company create Splatoon? Or that same company create arms. It would be more shocking to see that company create something like, I don't know, Last of Us, right? Like it would be such a wide departure from Nintendo's typical design language. But it's not to say that Nintendo doesn't dabble in that. Obviously, we've seen Xenoblade Chronicles, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But again, it's made by an outside studio that Nintendo owns. So we have to sit back and wonder does Nintendo deserve the criticism for rehashing their IPs? And obviously, you may have to note before I talk about this that I'm biased. I'm a Nintendo fan. This is a Nintendo channel. We talk a lot about Nintendo. I clearly favor them over other companies. If I didn't, I would be named something else, and I would talk more about those other companies than I already do, even as I've increased my conversations for them heading into the next generation. The deal is, I think that some of this criticism is fair in some regards. If you are on the outside looking in, you have never played a Nintendo platform, and you head out to your Walmarts, your Best Buys, your Targets, and you go to you go to uh, look at what game selection is available. You're going to see the following: Hyrule Warriors. Hmm? It's got a link on the cover. You're going to see Breath of the Wild. You're going to see Link's Awakening. You're going to see Super Mario Party. You're going to see Mario Kart 8. You're going to see Super Mario Odyssey. You're going to be see oh latest release Super Mario 3D All Stars. You're going to see New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, and eventually next year you're going to see Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Mario and Zelda. And that is going to just further your perception that Nintendo just keeps rehashing these IPs. Now, we all know, obviously, when you dive deeper into it, that that's not true on a pure technical level. Uh, Breath of the Wild is pretty much unlike any Zelda game we've had since Zelda 1. So that's, you know, that, that, that it's refreshing in the genre it's in, and that's why it's so popular. But also, it's still a Zelda game. And Nintendo still does rely heavily on Zelda and Mario. We can't, like, it's undeniable. But we can't ignore things like they came out with Animal Crossing back during the GameCube era, and now Animal Crossing is one of their biggest IPs, right? We can't ignore Splatoon. They came up with that during the Wii U era, and Splatoon 2 is now one of their best-selling IPs. Uh, Arms came out this year. Now, Arms, I don't think, is ever going to get super massive, but it sold a couple million for a fighting game, which is really, really good. Not Smash numbers, but really good. We're clearly going to get an Arms 2, Legs, whatever they decide to call it. It'd be funny if they go with the Legs joke. Uh, but Nintendo does rely heavily on their stable of IP. But any company should. 
these people that are that are critical of Nintendo for rehashing and, and being so reliant on a couple IPs, why aren't they going after Activision Blizzard in the same way? Okay, so Activision Blizzard relies heavily on, well, let's see, World of Warcraft, still ongoing, still has an expat coming out this year, and Call of Duty. Those are like the two temple IPs that they are just leaning and leaning and leaning on like crazy. And to be fair, I have no issue with them doing that. But if you're going to be critical of Nintendo, why aren't we critical of them? Why aren't we critical of Sony? They are still making God of War games. That's still one of the biggest IPs they have. Oh, you know, they came up with Last of Us on PlayStation. That's right. Last of Us 2. Now we're going to have another one probably. Like, you, now they're going to start being super reliant on, like, a couple franchises. Now, now Spider-Man's big for them. Like, you know, yeah, it's not 30 years, but Sony hasn't been at this as long as Nintendo, so it can't be 30 years. Oh, Xbox, they're so reliant on Gears, Halo, and Forza. Okay. But what's wrong with that? What's wrong with those IPs? That's like complaining that PC is so reliant on like World of Warcraft and um, I don't know Fall Guys or whatever's popular in the moment. Like the reality is that these systems should be these platform holders that make games should keep making the tentpole franchises. Not only because they keep selling well, so the demand is clearly there, but because they are essentially representations of the company. At this point, Zelda and Mario are indistinguishable from the brand name Nintendo. And that's the way it should be. It doesn't mean that that's all these companies are doing, though. And, and to say that is being extremely disingenuous to the broader scope of these companies. You know, Activision does other things besides Call of Duty and World of Warcraft. You know, EA does other things besides just their EA Sports games. But people look at that and they like to make generalizations because they're either jealous of the company's success or they have this, in the case of Nintendo, there's still this reputation going around that Nintendo fans are children. Obviously, there are kids that play Nintendo games. There's kids that play Sony. There's kids that play Xbox games as well. Like, it, kids play every platform. But the thing is, I'm in my mid-30s. To hear that you're playing a kiddie console feels like you're trying to insult me for my taste in games not being the same as yours. And the thing is, I still enjoy the Assassin's Creed and the Call of Duties and the, the Horizon Zero Dawns and The Last of Us and like all, all these games. I still enjoy them. But I can also sit down and play Mario Odyssey and have a great time. I can play Breath of the Wild, have a great time. Play Splatoon 2, have a great time. Nintendo creates games that are a bit more accessible in terms of their presentation, but just as skillful as any other game that you play. Breath of the Wild... You know, this goes on said is an extremely skillful game. Extremely skillful. Yes, you can go anywhere and do anything, but no matter how much stamina you have, no matter how much hearts you have, the enemies don't get easier. You could take more hits, but they don't get easier. You still have to learn how to beat them. You still have to figure out the Lynels and the Golden Lynels. And all that. you still have to figure out these enemies and get good at beating them. And I'll admit to this day, I'm still not the greatest Breath of the Wild player ever, even though it's my favorite game. Like... I'll still get my butt kicked by a Lionel here and there. Like it, it's not, it's not something that can can go outside that Nintendo foregoes skill to create uh, more casual experiences. That's not what Nintendo does. So, at, at the core of it, Nintendo does rehash their games in the sense that they rely on those IPs, just like everyone else relies on their temple IPs. But Nintendo continues to make new stuff. You know, need we forget they dabbled in in, in Labo VR? We finally have VR. You know. You know, tested by Nintendo for the first time since Virtual Boy. Uh, what about Ring Fit Adventure? It's a rather unique workout game that's really starting to take off worldwide. Uh, what about, you know, obviously we've talked about ARMS already in Splatoon. You know, but there's many, many examples, you know, of Nintendo trying something new and giving us games that are out of the ordinary. They don't sell as well. Like, they don't, they're not going to sell as well. They don't have a pre-established fan base. But Nintendo has continued to show a wide variety of content from Fire Emblem, you know, Metroid. You know, it's funny when people bring up Metroid. Metroid's never even been a big seller for Nintendo. So, like, why we bring that up is, oh, they're relying on it for 30 just because it's old and they still make games for it? Okay, Kirby's old. Let me get to that. Why don't we bring it in Kirby? Like, you only mention the games that sell well. Well, Metroid doesn't sell well. So, I don't really get why that gets brought up in conversation so much. But, it, I don't know. Nintendo might be pigeonholed in terms of the style of games they make in terms of um the presentation style like you know if they come up with a new ip 
it's highly likely not going to be a realistic art style. Nintendo doesn't tend to use realistic art styles. But it doesn't mean that it won't be something unique and something fun and something that fits in the way that Nintendo does things. And there's nothing wrong with that. It might have been 30 years or 35 years in the case for Mario and almost for Metroid and Zelda. And Nintendo keeps making these games because they keep selling. But they keep doing unique and fun things with them to make them feel fresh every time. And beyond that, Nintendo continues to deliver new IPs. Nintendo continues to deliver a wide breadth of content. You know, whenever people say, oh, there hasn't been any games released this year. Okay, well, what about Astral Chain last year? Like Nintendo, you know, paid Platinum Games to make that game. It's exclusive. Why are we talking about more about Astral Chain? Hmm? Why not? I mean, we're going to ignore that it exists. What about Damon X Machina? Are we going to ignore that exists as well? And Nintendo paid for that? Like, Nintendo is trying to get a variety of games on the platform. We're getting Dynasty Warriors 9 next year. You know, I, it, it's a bit baffling. When you sit back and just focus on Nintendo's tentpole IPs and just say that's all Nintendo does. And as Nintendo fans, I know we hear this all the time. I just heard it, I don't know, over 100 times in the last week from various people across many different platforms and in real life. Nintendo isn't just for kids. Nintendo isn't just about Mario and Zelda as much as we love those games. Nintendo provides entertainment for all. And if you're not into Nintendo's style of games, that's okay too. Variety is the spice of life, and thank, you know, thankfully there's multiple platforms out there that can provide you a wide variety of experiences. I don't expect to play a game like World of Warcraft on, on a Switch. I do play it on my PC, but I don't expect to play that game on a Switch. I don't expect you know, a Last of Us 2 on Switch, but I do expect something like that on a PlayStation. I don't expect Halo on Switch, but I expect something like that on a Microsoft platform. I think that we need to be more respectful towards people that enjoy games that we don't and not try to generalize an entire fan base uh, into something that isn't fair or, or even a company that that isn't fair. I'm not saying don't be critical. Nintendo makes stupid choices at times. All these companies make stupid choices at times. Sony's in the midst of making a number of stupid choices right now. Doesn't seem to matter at the moment because they are promising a lot of really good games and Demon Souls Remastered looks absolutely like god tier but we need to be respectful that these companies that we don't buy their games for that we don't buy their systems that maybe you're just not as knowledgeable about those companies as you think you are and this is my message to outsiders that are critical of nintendo that don't really buy nintendo platforms or don't really dabble in nintendo stuff you're you're not i don't expect you to be as knowledgeable as me when I was waiting for the Xbox Series S pre-order out at GameStop, I ta was talking to Xbox fans, and they were all, you know, very out of touch with what Nintendo's doing. One of them even had a Switch and was playing Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and even he didn't fully grasp everything going on uh, with Nintendo. Heck, they didn't even grasp everything going on with Microsoft. Like, they couldn't even tell the difference between the X and the S. And you had one person saying that the, the S is less powerful than an Xbox One X, you know, because of the teraflop thing. And, you know, I, I tried explaining that's not really how it works. It's not just about teraflops. There's a hell of a lot of benefits of the S. But it doesn't matter. People don't want to hear that. They want to hear what they want to hear. They want to hear, I need an X because it's the only thing more powerful than a One X. I need this game because it's like another game I played. Oh, Nintendo? Yeah, my kids can play that, but not me. That it, It's a reputation. And it sucks. And it's a reputation Nintendo's never going to shed because they do like me and the company that is viewed as for everyone. But it means everyone, folks. Hardcore gamers alike. It's okay to be a serious Nintendo gamer and be an adult. Just like it's okay to be a serious, uh, you know, I don't know. What's a, what's a popular game out there? Assassin's Creed Valhalla? To be a serious Assassin's Creed player, but, but be a kid. There's nothing wrong with it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, Assassin's Creed's a little interesting because it's probably too old for kids. At least as a parent, I will not let my kids touch that until they're much older. Uh, maybe At least 16. But, anyways, that's all I got for you guys for this video. Hopefully, uh, the points came across. A little bit of a rant. A little bit of, uh, of frustration. But, uh... I'm just kind of tired of, of Nintendo and other companies, to be honest, being pinch and hold uh, when they do so much more than what they're ever given credit for. I'm Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.